Well, good morning. I have some, uh, some tough acts to follow this morning. Uh, wasn't Senator Booker great? Wasn't he fantastic? I said the nerve of these guys sending me up here after him. Um, it is wonderful to be here. I'm thankful to God to have this opportunity to be in front of you. And I am elated about the room full of energy and ideas that we have. We got a room full of leaders here, a collection of young people who are leaders. And I'd be remiss if I didn't start with my own story, my favorite story about leadership. Uh, it's a story about former U.S. Senator uh, Bill Bradley from New Jersey. And as the story goes, Bill Bradley went into a restaurant with a couple of his colleagues and he sat down at the table and he noticed that there was only one pat of butter for each colleague that was seated at the table with him. So he motioned the waiter to come over and he said, waiter, uh, have a little mistake here. We've only got one pat of butter, I'd like a few more pats of butter for myself and my colleagues. And the waiter said, I'm sorry, sir, we have a strict policy in this restaurant, only one pat of butter per customer. So the senator looked at the waiter and said, do you know who I am? The waiter said, no, actually, I don't. He said, well, I'm, I'm U.S. Senator Bill Bradley from New Jersey. Before I was a senator, I played in the NBA. Uh, before that, I was a Rhodes Scholar from Princeton University. I think if I want a few extra pats of butter, you're going to give them to me. And he looked at his colleagues, and the waiter looked at Bill Bradley and said, are you done? And Bill Bradley said, yeah, I guess I am. And the waiter said, well, do you know who I am? And Bill Bradley said, no, no, actually, I don't. And the waiter said, I'm the guy in charge of the butter. And he turned around and walked away. <laughs> Leaders come in all shapes and sizes, people. <laughs> I want to just, my brief moments with you this morning, a few dates. 1863, the year of emancipation, of the Emancipation Proclamation in America, uh, an end to one of the most abhorrent, peculiar institutions ever created in the history of mankind. 1935, a pioneering president and a Congress who connected and who believed in creating a social safety net, went on to develop and pass Social Security. 1944, visionary leaders created the GI Bill for returning soldiers, which unlocked college access to a whole generation of leaders and unlocked economic prosperity for many, many generations to come. In the 1950s, leaders created the Federal Highway Act, which was a vision for the modern infrastructure, the roads, the bridges, the public work projects that are the very backbone of our economy today. And then in the 1960s, of course, the civil rights movement and era, the marches of Dr. King and others, the lives that were sacrificed to end Jim, Jim Crowism in this country once and for all. So why all the dates? Why walk down memory lane for just a moment? It's because I want to remind us all, as Senator Booker did, what other generations have done when they're faced with magnificently large issues or problems. That they rose to the challenges of their day to address those issues. And, and frankly, that's where we are, as he said so eloquently this morning. Those challenges of today are boiled down to a few different things that all lead to the same road. We're seeing a rise of community versus police across the country. We're seeing a lack of access to the middle class. It's an hourglass with the top growing and the bottom growing exponentially faster and the middle of the hourglass being squeezed to, ob to oblivion. And we're seeing a lack of justice, as the senator talked about, in our criminal justice system. All of these have a common underlying theme, and all of these are addressable by solving and opening up opportunities for young people all across this nation. I, I am convinced that the greatest threat to our nation today is the threat to our own people, and it's a threat from within. And there are two realities that I would just leave with you this morning in that regard. One is, we don't have much time. We always think we have more time than we have, but the world is changing rapidly. And I've been on enough delegations and been around the world enough times to tell you the rest of the world is intent upon beating us at our own game in the 21st century. The window of opportunity is, is short and it's closing. The second one is 
And I said this earlier this morning, and I'll say it again. I think we are operating from a false premise. It's one that we've all been taught, we've all learned, we've all talked about. It's the assumption that we have to have poor people. That somehow the scarcity model says there just aren't enough resources to go around. Somebody can't go to college. There's not enough colleges. Somebody can't have money. There's not enough money to go around. This is a zero-sum game that we're working against. And if I can't leave you with any other message this morning, my hope is that you will stand with me in the belief that that is nonsense for the American people and for this country. <laughs> nonsense. So what do we need to do? Well, let's, let's focus in on our human capital. Let's invest in our people. Jobs, training, education. In short, let's focus on creating new 21st century pathways to opportunity. Nobody can do this alone. It's going to take a new, what I often call a coalition of the willing to pull it off. Four quick thoughts on what we must do. One, recognize the equation in the 21st century has to be demand driven. We've got to look to the companies that have the jobs to be a part of the conversation. I spent 12 years of my life running nonprofits. And I'm here to tell you if we have nonprofit gatherings without business in the room, we are making a mistake. This has to be about jobs. It has to be about pathways to opportunities for young people and opening up economics, economic opportunity. The job and the opportunity for a career is the end game. The education and the training is a means to that end. Second, we have to see diversity as our greatest strength. Not in the old charity model of we're going to do this because it's a good thing to do, it makes us feel good. Diversity is our greatest strength. In the side of business, work groups perform better. In the side of society, the more diverse we are, the better our solutions will be. This is not just about the charity model, this is about hiring fantastic people. Third, we've got to get out of the box and collaborate, as never before. Nonprofits with other nonprofits, which, by the way, nonprofits are notoriously bad at collaborating with each other. I can say that publicly. I'm sorry if I offend anybody. <laughs> but it's true, because the system has been set up for nonprofits to be fiercely independent, right? We need to tear that down. Nonprofits need to collaborate with each other. Businesses need to collaborate with each other and share ideas. Right? Nonprofits, businesses, and philanthropy and government all need to work together. Fourth, and finally on this point, we can't wait for government. With all due respect to Cory Booker, the federal government, as we knew it in the 20th century, is not working anymore. We can't expect the federal government to solve this problem. They are not going to be the innovators. We are going to be the innovators. What federal government will do is what federal government is very good at doing, which is scale big ideas. And Senator Booker said this, the big ideas need to come from us. Let's rely on federal government to do what they do. So I want to close on just what Starbucks is doing very quickly, because we, I, I don't want to pretend that we've gotten this right. We haven't. We're new and we're experimenting and we're trying to do our best. But there's some things that we're doing that are, are, are interesting. One is our college achievement plan. I don't know if you've heard about it. We launched it last June. It literally is a pathway to college for free for a barista who works 20 hours a week, can complete their degree online at Arizona State University for free in any one of 45 disciplines. They want to be a nurse. They want to be an engineer. They want to be an English major. We're letting them go and pursue what they want to pursue. And by the way, they can leave the company the day after they're done. This is where corporate America needs to go. It's an investment in people. It's an investment in human capital. It's the right thing to do. And by the way, it blows up the scarcity model because online education can scale to infinity for very low cost. Second, we're focused on opportunity youth through our Solution Cities model, where we're working with select mayors and cities, holding town halls and talking about how to solve the opportunity youth problem with or opportunity youth opportunity with a coalition of leaders from all sectors of the economy. Mayors are driving the discussion. 
More on that as we continue to develop it, but we're now working with Aspen Institute, combining our efforts with theirs, with the Schultz Family Foundation, with Markle Foundation, with many others who are looking at cities as the unit of change. And we're gonna to continue to invest resources in that. And third and finally is our efforts with Leaders Up. We had a fantastic breakfast this morning with business leaders. I know some of you are in this room. This is the notion about can we take our supply chains and activate our supply chains. We have 18,000 companies in our supply chains. All of them are hiring young people. Can we get our supply chain at Starbucks to hire exactly the same opportunity youth population that we're all talking about? So we're learning, we're building everything we're doing with an open architecture. I invite you to learn with us and vice versa. I'm happy to share and I'm happy to collaborate, but this must happen and it must happen on our watch, and it must happen now. I think we can all see plainly from the young people who've been up on the stage, who are in this room with us, that opportunity to youth doesn't just speak about them. It speaks to the opportunity for us as America, as Americans, the opportunity for all of us to impact our future. Let's unlock that future together. Thank you and God bless you.